right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply, and this is going to be another video on the Classy Fringe Purse. Um, so, and we already did the tooling video. Uh, did that one with a student, so that you know if her questions matched your questions, hopefully that helped better explain stuff I was doing as I was tooling and things like that. And also, you got some kind of critiquing. Well, a novice was tooling. You got to watch that and see what I had to say about you know, hey, hold the tool this way, stuff like that. Anyway. Um, all that to say, uh, this video is going to be all about prep work, and then the, the final video of all this will be just the assembly itself. So in the prep work, we're going to um, we're going to cut out all of our fringe. Okay, nice pretty fringe. Um, we're going to install this clasp right here. Um, yeah, that's going to be a lot of it. Uh, and uh, anyway, um, but I want to show you all, um, we're going to cut the fringe. We're not going to use a fringe template or anything. I'm just going to use a ruler and a rotary cutter and show you how I cut fringe for something like this. Because this fringe is longer than, your, um, than a fringe template that we produce. Okay, that's kind of for shorter stuff. And uh, anyway, so let's talk about in the project box version of this. Okay, you got all the leather. Um, you got two of these yokes right here. You got this piece right here for the clasp. You got two of this right here, but that's for the um, the D-ring on the sides, and then it also kind of covers up that seam on the sides of the tooled leather. Um, I believe we got two D-rings. These came from Buckle Guy. They're really, really nice solid brass D-rings. Two of the um, swivel trigger snaps. Those, again, Buckle Guy, really nice stuff and then a magnetic clasp for the closure of the purse. And again, we'll install this in today's video, okay? Um, as far as other leather, there's a bottom cutout right there. It needs to be skived about 5 eighths of an inch around all the way around. Um, two sides, okay, skiving on the two, si on the two sides of the purse are gonna be on three sides of the uh, two of the short edges and one of the long edges, okay, and once again about five-eighths of an inch um, width of the sky there, so that's again twice. And then these two pieces are our fringe piece, okay. Now, I only bought one clicker die and that was the size of the side of the purse and the fringe needs to be cut just a little bit smaller. Same thing with this, why waste a whole nother giant piece of acrylic to show you the piece for the fringe. Um, when there's a line in your template, it goes down there and across there, and I'm about to show you how to use that line to trim those pieces to make them the right size to be fringe pieces instead of the body pieces. Again, um, you know, we do this to try to conserve acrylic. I'm not trying to be cheap as much as I'm trying to, this is a lot of plastic. Plastic's not good for, you know, the environment's not good for your shop space. I mean, cause it's, it's bulky, it takes up room. So yeah, this was our way of kind of condensing that when this is super easy to use as it is. And I'm about to show you that right now. So um, without further ado, we're gonna cut out our fringe pieces, cut them down to size, and then I'm gonna show you how I cut the fringe. Okay, so be right back. We'll be zoomed in on the desk when I do. All right, so currently these piece, this piece, uh, as it came in the project box, is the same size as this template right here, okay? And that was the, the clicker die that we bought to cut them, cut them out. But again, this clicker die has a little line scribed on it. Might be kind of hard to see in the video, it's there. Um, anyway, so if you take the paper off the back of this template, you can see through it. Sometimes they come right off, sometimes they want to rip up. When we get all this acrylic, it has paper on both sides, and to put it in to the machines that make the uh, templates, we uh, have to peel one side off, so sometimes that can be a chore, depending on the weather and stuff. All right, so my advice is always, I like to turn the template over to where the line is down against the leather, okay? So what I do then is I line up those lines with the edges of my leather on one side, and then when I cut out the other two sides, now it's gonna be just the perfect size, okay? There we go. I need to do that two times um, because I've got two fringe pieces, all right? And that's how easy it is to make sure that these are the right size for the fringe and not the right size for the side of the bag. 
Two birds, one stone, right? All right, I'm gonna do the same thing one more again. Line up my edges. There we go. All right, so there it is. That's how you cut that down. Now we're gonna turn it into fringe. Okay, and again, I'm gonna show you how to use a, a rotary cutter and a ruler to do that because our fringe template is not the, uh, the right length to do this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this, my cutting mat has lines on it. And if I line the top of this up with one of those lines, when I tape it down, then as I cut, I can kind of judge how straight I'm cutting by whether or not it's still parallel with the, the, the perpendicular lines, okay? If that makes sense, using parallel and perpendicular in the same sentence, <laughs> talking about two different... Anyway, so I take my tape and I just put it across the top half inch of my, uh, my leather here, okay? Make sure my leather's up against that line like it needs to be. There we go. Okay, and I just put it over the top half inch of the leather. And that's gonna hold it in place for me, keep it nice and still while I do what I need to do. So this is a clear ruler and it's got grid lines on it. Um, I didn't grab one to bring over here, I don't believe, unfortunately. But a lot of the time I use a quilter square for this. They're usually about six inches wide, sometimes uh, 24 inches long, sometimes they're giant squares. They come in all shapes and forms, but they've got lots of lines on them for things like this, okay? And um, that's a very, very easy, I made this ruler myself on our, our machines. It's, the, it's actually the same as our blue rulers, but it's clear and it's a little bit thicker. Um, anyway, I just uh, make them out of scraps. Um, but anyway, it has eighth inch grids on it and I want quarter inch fringe. So I'm gonna, that means I'm gonna take two of those lines and put them over the edge of the, uh, the leather here. I'm take my same rotary cutter and I'm just gonna cut all the way from the bottom up to the tape. All right, making dang sure you don't ever wanna go all the way across cause then you just cut it in a slice and now it's not fringe, it's two pieces. Okay, so there we go. There's the first piece of my fringe right there. All right, and then I keep going down the line just like that. I'm just gonna do it over and over and over again until I get it all the way done. And I will also, as I get one or two of them done, I kind of slide them off over to the side so that I can see where I've cut and where I haven't again much easier than if I just left them up against there. All right. And then like I said, with my, my lines on my, my cutting surface here, as I get to them, I can kind of tell that the, the, the edge of my leather and the edge of and the, one of these lines is still perfectly parallel. So obviously I'm cutting them straight for now. As you go across here, that probably will get a little bit womper jawed and it'll get a little bit crooked in one way or another. And um, anyway, you just want to make sure that uh, you're taking care of that as you go. Okay, so you don't need to watch me do this 658 times or how many ever times it takes to get all the way across this. Um, I guess I could do some math on how many times that would be, but uh, I'm not going to because then I'll just get sad. Uh, but anyway, when I come back, we'll have this piece cut out and uh, we'll talk about um, placing the clasps on our uh, uh, veg tan pieces. So we'll be back. All right, so there it is. All that fringe is cut, looks great. So now I'm just gonna carefully take and peel my tape off the desk and then hold down a corner of my fringe as I carefully peel the tape off the fringe. Now, um, I will say this, with this leather, this painter's tape is not an issue, but some leathers, it could pull up the, uh, the finish on the leather. And that's why I just did it on only a, a half an inch or even a little bit less maybe. Uh, across the top of there, okay, because that's actually going to be up under the uh, level of the yoke later, um, just in case it does get ugly. But there's all our fringe, it's so pretty. 
Um, again, I have to do that twice, okay? This is, this is only one of the two pieces of fringe I need. But I wanted to move on to the next thing that we're gonna do for this video, which is the prep work of putting our, um, our clasp on here and on one of our yokes, okay? Um, now our yoke that we tooled in our other video is the one that the, the part of the clasp is gonna go on and then the, the back end of this is going to sew onto the, the reverse, uh, the other yoke, okay? But that part will be part of construction later. So what do we need to do? We need to discuss this uh, clasp right here in case somebody's never used such a thing. It comes in four pieces, all right? So there's piece one and piece two. And then this is piece three and four. It's actually together right now. We've got to remove these two screws to, to take these two layers apart. This is the hardest piece right here because we have to make a very strange shaped hole in this piece for that to fit on, okay? So I'm gonna gather up everything I need for that and then we're gonna get going on all that. All right, so for this part, I'm gonna need a Phillips screwdriver to take the little screws out of that piece to take it apart. I have me a regular um, standard size screwdriver and the tip of that screwdriver is about the size of the prongs on the back of this. So I'm gonna kind of use it as a chisel. So don't call my woodshop teacher from high school and tell him I did this because this, this is a big, big no-no, okay? Uh, <laughs> anyway, so how this all goes together, this piece right here mounts to our little flap um, that comes through the handles. And then this piece right here, we're gonna take our nice beautiful tooling that we did and we're going to screw it up by putting this piece here. Okay, so we're gonna to have to knock some holes in that nice beautiful tooling that we did. So, yeah. But we're gonna start with this one. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is take these little screws off and I need to make sure that I put them somewhere that I won't lose them because there's no chance in the world that you'll, those, you can't get those screws at Home Depot, guaranteed. They need to make, you know, they have like Batteries Plus store that you can just find any kind of battery you ever needed. They need to have that for a screw store as well. All right, so there's what the back of that bad boy looks like. It's all funny shaped. They couldn't make it easy on us and just make it like a regular oval. These little magnets sit off to the side of it and then of course the screw holes. So what I do is I put it right where I want it. Okay. Right where I want it, nice and straight. And basically I just kind of center it to where there's just as much um, room between it and the the end of the uh, the piece as there is off to the sides so that it just looks nice and even and in the right spot. Now on the other end of this piece I put my uh, my maker's mark and then I just did a kind of a decorative border around it because I wanted it to look pretty. And uh, anyway now I'm going to take and press very very firmly that into my leather and I'm gonna rock it back and forth and everything and what I'm trying to do is get an impression of it in my leather and I got a decent little impression okay so what do I do with that now I find me some hole punches that are about the same size if you don't have hole punches like that then you can always uh, just you know muscle it out and cut it out and I know that sucks but that's what what really stinks about clasps like this is trying to find how to perfectly cut out that hole to where you're not ruining things. Okay, so I got me a big old hole punch here and I'm gonna put it at both ends of what I'm doing and give it a whack. Okay. There's one end and the other end and then I've got me a smaller hole punch for up here where the screws are. Okay, and then I take my cutting knife of some sorts and I cut out the little areas in between. And then I'll try to test fit it. And if it fits, that's great. If it doesn't, then we'll figure out where we need to trim it out to make it fit.
So it doesn't quite fit. And it's because of the magnets on the side. Like when you look under here, you can just see where the problem is. All right, and then the other problem is I've still got tape on the back of this from when I tooled it. So let me pull that tape off because I don't need that there. Matter of fact, I need no tape on it. There we go. Okay. So it's the little magnets on the sides. So I kind of take it, put it back into position, press it again, and um, then kind of figure out what I need to do to make it fit. All right. So it's going to be, you can use the hole punch again and do this, or you can cut it out with your cutter. It, it doesn't really matter how you do it, but it's got to get done. And I just kind of keep hacking slowly away at it until I have all the material removed to make it fit right. Okay, getting much, much closer here. So I do need to extend this out a little bit. And again. Almost there. I've just got a little bit of trim work right there and there, and I should have this sucker done. And the good news is this is a nice wide border area to do this, okay? And so if you mess up a little bit, you cut it a little bit too large, this is probably still going to fit okay. All right, now while I said that, I forgot what I need to trim. Got it. And it's okay if your hole is not shaped the same as, as the hole in the thing, as long as it fits snugly once you get it fit. All right, a little bit more for those magnets. Check that one more time here. And it really is just kind of a keep going until you get it type thing. Um, I know that sounds dumb. It's not very scientific of me, but it is what it is. Cool. So now I got it on there. So now I'm going to screw it into place. Okay, so I just put the back cover back on it. I find my little screws and I screw it back together. No big deal. problem with the magnetic one is the screws stick to it if you uh, drop them accidentally. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to check it for straightness. Looks pretty good. It's on there. Okay, now, what's next, you say? Well, funny you should ask. Now we have to put the other end of it into here, okay? So what I do is I put it inside the clasp where it belongs. Now, keep in mind, there's a polarity here, okay? It's a magnet, so if you turn it over and put it in there and it doesn't go, then it's the wrong way. So just make sure when you install it that you're going the right way that it'll actually go into the uh, the the receptacle for it. Okay, and I line it up, I take it, put it on here, I line it up, and I want it to go just about there. I'll measure where my prongs are on the back uh, to tell you in just one second. 
Um, but I think they're about an inch down from the top. Maybe just three quarters. Um, but anyway, so three quarters of an inch from the, the inside of the handle there and then centered right to left. And then I'm gonna look and make sure I got everything nice and, and parallel and uh, to the, uh, you know, the sides and the edges, make sure everything's straight. And once again, I'm gonna push and rock and get me some impressions. So there's an impression and there's an impression. And again, that top one is just under three quarters of an inch from the very top there. Okay. Now where is the last piece to this thing? There. Okay. And then you can put that little metal piece over your uh, where your prongs are going to go in just to make sure that it's not too close to your handle. It'll be on the back side of your leather, but you don't want it too close to the handle there. Okay. Um, because we'll have to cover it up. All right, so anyway, I've got those two little marks, and that's what I take this handy dandy little screwdriver for, and I put it in those marks, and I just chisel it right through the leather. Again, please don't tell my high school chop teacher that I'm using a standard screwdriver as a wood chisel. He would be very upset. All right, then I take, I leave it in the, in the thing just to make sure I don't screw up the polarity and uh, put it on there backwards. Okay, I'll take it and put it on there. Take the back piece. Now, if you feel the back piece, it's been stamped out of metal. So one side of it's kind of smooth. The other side of it's pretty coarse. So I make sure that the coarse side is down against the leather, just like that. All right. Um, some people bend the prongs out. Some people bend the prongs in towards each other. I personally have never found that one way is better than the other as long as it's good and snug and uh, on there good. Okay, so I'm gonna, on this one, I'm gonna bend them towards each other. I'm just taking a pair of pliers here to do that. And then I'm even gonna take a hammer and just tap. Okay, I'm not gonna beat on it, but I wanna tap on it and make sure they're nice and flat. So I'll use my ball peen hammer, not my nice leather hammer that I don't like to scratch up. good and flat. Okay, now, now that that's inserted, we can go ahead and take this off, and we want to once again check it, make sure it's nice and square, and it is. It looks looks good, nice and perpendicular to the bag, uh, so everything's good there. Um, now, it's up to you. We can, you can take a patch of leather and glue over that, or you can line this entire thing, um, both pieces, this one and the other side, um, you can line them both. Um, I personally work, am going to line the entire thing, um, but if you just want to sew, uh, glue a patch over that because you don't want to sew all the way around the edges and everything, that's understandable as well. Um, if you're using a leather with a nice back and you didn't get antique all over it and stuff, I wasn't careful with my antique because I knew I was going to be lining this. Okay, So that'll be part of my build is that I line this with a different piece of leather. Just It'll be just a scrap of uh, something. I don't know. I'll look around. Um, and yeah, I'll line these two pieces. Okay. So that's going to be it for prep work for this bag. All right. I'm going to get this video posted because I know people are wondering where in the world is the video for the classy, uh, fringe purse. Um, so we're going to get this part posted and then we're going to, tomorrow I'm hoping to be able to finish all this up and, uh, have everything ready to go. So until next time, I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply. Have a great day.